Sometimes updates just work, and sometimes they don't. Proxmon is just like any other software that you have. It needs patching so that it gets updated, new features, security vulnerabilities are, are covered, and all those kind of things over time. But one of the things that you'll find is that the update process simply doesn't work out of the box most of the time. And the reason for that is that most people, when they first get started with Proxmon, use the free version of it. Take a look at this. I don't know if you've noticed this, and I think I showed this in another video. When you first log into Proxmon through the, through the web interface, it's like, ah, it, it, I mean, it's right in your face. You don't have a valid subscription for the server. And a lot of people, you know, initially are like, oh no, something's disabled. No, 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 no. Nothing's, nothing's disabled. You simply click the OK button and go past that. What that's saying is you don't have a support subscription to Proxmon. Now, some people will look and say, well, I don't need support, right? I think I mentioned this as well. I'm having deja vu right now. Well, those people oftentimes have not gone through the circumstance where they're using Proxmon or any other piece of software or hardware in production, and it goes down and all eyes of the company turn to you and you're like, I don't know what to do, right? It's at that moment that you would literally saw off your own arm to, to be like, it's just somebody help me, yeah, please. You know, like it's, it's intense pressure. That's part of the game when you become a system engineer, right? So, so put, put all that aside, Proxmon is geared for people that have support packages out of the box. You can think of it like their little nudge that this should be supported. And so when you look at the update process, matter of fact, it's, it's super simple. It's just literally log into Proxmon, type in apt get update and apt get dis upgrade, which upgrade the, the, the foundation distribution of Proxmon, right? But you'll notice right from the, right from the start, and you, you can see it right here on the GUI if I bring this up, it's, it's telling me, hey, 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 whoa, 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 update package database, oh, the, the, the update command failed, meaning Proxmon is automatically trying to run this command and it's failing. And as a matter of fact, if we go to the shell, which I'll do right here and scoot that down um, and do an app to get update, it's gonna run through and burn comes up right here and says, fails to, yeah, I failed to, to fetch this package list. It is unauthorized. It's not signed. In a, in a nutshell, it's pretty much saying, hey, you don't have privileges to go to this enterprise.proxmon.com distribution source and get this. And why, why, why is that? Well, because you haven't paid for support. If you look at this, if you, if you look at the Proxmon package repositories page, right up front, it says, hey, the enterprise repository is what's recommended and what subscription users use. FYI, you can disable this repository by commenting out the line above, which if, if you want to do that, then go down to the no subscription repository, which of course, right on the wiki, they're going to tell you this is used for testing and non-production use simply because they, they don't want you to, to run, you know, Proxmon in production environments without some sort of support subscription. It's also the, the core of their business, right? That's how they get their money for, for supporting Proxmon. So it makes perfect sense to do that. So what we need to do to properly update Proxmon is if, if, if we want to get rid of those errors, do comment this out. And all you have to do is grab this. We'll copy that to our clipboard, run back to the shell. I use, I like using Pico, nice simple editor, right click and paste that in there, hit the enter key. And right there, it's like, Hey, this is where I'm going to get my updates. I'm going to put a little hashtag right in front of that little, uh, uh, pound symbol right there. Control X and yes, I'm going to save that as that same file name. Boom. That's now, that's now done, right? So I'm, I can do the app get update and it should go through. Boom. Yeah. Right there without any errors whatsoever. Right. But that just tells me there's no, there's no real updates available as of right now, but it's no longer updating Proxmon. That's where I have to go and add the no subscription repository. The way I'm going to do that is to edit this file, the sources.list, right? So I'll bring that back over here. Pico, right click. Paste it in, enter. There's the, the default file, which the, the repositories told me I would see. And if, if you look at, at the comparison, the only thing that they have right here is this little line added to it. And we might as well put their little commentary in there. So we know just by looking at this, that it is the unsupported version, as in the free version of Proxmon. I'll paste that in, control X, yes, enter. That is now in place and the sources are ready to go. At this point, we should be able to do the, the update command, just like we saw on the first screen, and it run through and check for updates without issues. Now again, Proxmon is configured to automatically check for updates, but if we wanna manually do it, all we have to do is go to the command line with app get update, copy to our clipboard, paste it in, and let it run. 
It's now going, it, notice right there, it found a simple, uh, a simple file that it needed to download from this no subscription repository. Copy the second line to your clipboard, come back in here, right click and paste it in. And it's going to ask you, hey, do you want to upgrade? Obviously, quite a large file, two, well, <laughs> relatively large, 289 megabytes of additional disk space needed. Yes, and now we are off to the races on upgrading our Proxmon instance. <laughs> There we go, updates have been downloaded and installed. At this point, the last thing to do anytime you're updating a server is reboot, right? So if you have virtual machines running, that's your chance to go pause them, suspend them, get the server rebooted, and now you have properly updated Proxmon. It's that simple.